All right, so here we go. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Sunshine, and you'll see this as we go through the presentation. In its current generation, Sunshine Plumbing, Heating, and Air is really only three years old. Um, my husband, William, who is a brilliant um, master plumber, uh, NAID certified HVAC technician, and also was very involved in solar thermal, um, when he was up in the mountains, had Sunshine solar and mechanical. And three years ago, we moved the whole organization down to Denver. Um, and then I'm going to share with you what happened then, because that's uh, really the part of the story on how we grew our business here in the Denver market. Because prior to that, um, William was running Sunshine up in Breckenridge, Colorado, which is a beautiful place to visit, a very unique place to do business. But once we moved down to Denver, um, we were able to really start the company the way it would work in most other cities around the United States. Um, and I'll just share with you my background on how this all came about, is um, I'm a former international VP with AT&T Wireless, and uh, I had an international assignment in the Caribbean. I know that sounds like a really hard uh, job. And when I came back, I became a business coach uh, with a company called Action Coach. And through my seven years of working as a business coach, I coach 17 different trades, including an HVAC company and a, a big plumbing company, an $8 million plumbing company here in Denver. And then I was the instructor for the SBA Emerging Leaders program and had a radio show on ESPN called Coaching Not Just for Sports. Um, and currently, I am the Secretary Treasurer of the Colorado PHCC, and I am the President and Majority Owner of Sunshine Plumbing, Heating, Air, LLC in its current uh, generation. So when I met my husband, the way uh, his company worked is he did um, a little bit of plumbing and a lot of snowmobiling, and then he married a business coach, and now he does a lot of plumbing and a little bit of snowmobiling, so, um, which is okay by him because as we, we reinvented ourselves here in Denver, um, our big plan is to make this company super profitable and running on its own so that within the next five years that we will be able to step away and enjoy uh, an, an income from Sunshine and run it um, you know, not as engaged as we are now, which is every single day. So that's our plan. It's always been our plan from the beginning. Uh, we started with the end result in mind. Um, so uh, that's where we're headed. And this is what we did in order to grow. And, and I think this is what everybody wants to hear. It's like, how the heck did you grow this fast? And this is really what we did. And, and I'll also share with you what our marketing budget was. So. Um, this is our team. Uh, some people have changed a little bit. Um, once a quarter, we go down to the food bank of the Rockies, and all of us serve. Um, and that's our way of uh, giving back to our community. And this is right here in Commerce City, where we're located. So all of our team goes down, and we uh, serve the uh, local you know, somewhat homeless population and the underserved population in Commerce City. Um, and so this is a good group of us. And there's William and I in the middle. And um, we're going to do this again next week, so we'll probably have a new photo. Some of the faces have changed, and some of them remain the same. Um, so our story, I, I told you a little bit about it, but William started as a plumber in 1986 in Detroit under his dad. So he's second generation. And he started a company and ended with 10 trucks. Um, in 2007, he came out to Breckenridge, and he never went back. So he started Sunshine Solar and Mechanical, um, and he has been noted, and you'll see a photo later, um, his solar thermal projects are incredible, and they have been noted in PM Magazine and PME, PME Magazine. Um, he's very, very talented at what he does, and customers just absolutely love him, and that's a big part of um, this online review process, you need to have someone out front, uh, like a William, <clears throat> or as we try to develop our teams, that are very, very customer focused and very uh, friendly and engaging, that makes people want to go out and write reviews for you, and makes them want to refer you to other people. So um, in 2011, he started moving the business down to Denver. And at the end of 2011, we put him up on Angie's list. <clears throat> so he was working up in the mountains a couple of days a week. And then whenever he would get Angie's list, 
um, referrals, and he would book his days down here. And we started off very small. It was just William and his truck. Um, and then in 2012, I was still coaching, but I started running Sunshine um, out of my coaching office downtown. So I was able to oversee what was going on, and I was taking care of all of the marketing and uh, the general back end stuff, all of the the financials and those sorts of things, and it was really William out in the field. Um, but by 2012, we started getting really popular on Angie's List, um, and we did $177,000 in revenue. And as you know, in, in plumbing, that's not all that hot. Um, so in 2013, though, we went up to $565,000 in revenue, once again with a very, very small marketing budget and mainly only on reviews. And then in 2014, we um, hit a million eighty-six thousand, once again with a pretty small marketing budget. We are running now only about 4% of our budget is going to marketing. And I am now in a position where I'm starting to cut out some of the marketing um, that we have been doing, um, I'm, I'm sort of doing a pruning, which I recommend to everyone do at least once a year, if not sooner than that, and taking a look at all of your numbers and making sure that the marketing that you're paying for is working, and if it's not, what can you do to change that, and what are some other things, new things that are out on the horizon that might be um, better serving your company and better ROI. So um, I'm going to share with you now what exactly we were doing. So there's William and PM Magazine, and that's the largest solar uh, thermal um, installation in the United States. It's at 7,000 feet, and that's a car wash. So they were able to get a really great ROI. So that's summer of 2010. Um, and just some things that I'd like you guys to think about. Um, what are some of the things that you want out of this workshop? And you can you can note the comments. I can see them. So if there are certain things that you want to hear, like what we did, um, please mark them down because I would be happy to answer them. Um, you know, when I'm sitting here actually talking to myself, the presentation could tend to go a little bit faster than if we were engaged. And every other time I've done this presentation, I've had a lot of audience participation. So I really encourage you to ask questions and stop me if you're not sure of what I was talking about or you want more information on that particular area, because I'd be happy to um, share that with everyone. So um, some of the things, we call these BFOs. I'm not cursing at you. It's called blinding flashes of the obvious. And what we um, say BFOs are about, a lot of the things that I'm going to share with you are things that you have already heard. You already know about some of the online reviews. You know some of the ways to grow your business through marketing. You're probably doing a fair amount of marketing. But this really should be a refresher. And my goal for you today is to walk away from this webinar with two or three things that you can go and to put into action right away that you can like say, hey, tomorrow we're going to start doing this, this is a great idea, or this is something I thought about but I never really did it, or that's something we used to do and we don't do it anymore, or man, we need to do more of that. And I'm going to share you with, with all the things that we are already doing. So here's our marketing spends. So in 2014 when we did a million dollars, we only spent $20,000 in marketing, and a big chunk of that, probably um, four thousand dollars in total, when all said and done, was a new website. Um, and you're going to hear I, I get really itchy about my website. So we started out really cheap in 2012. We didn't really even have one in 2011. William had one for Sunshine Solar, and it was. Um, it was pretty basic, but in 2012, I bought a website from Freelancer, um, and that's something that you might want to write down. There's going to be some areas, and I'm going to tell you to write this down. Freelancer.com or Odesk.com are really cheap places where you can get all kinds of things done. So you can get websites, graphic design, flyers, uh, a logo, whatever it is. And what you do is you put your project up on these websites, freelancer.com or Odesk, and you get bids. And the bids come in from all over the world. Some people feel very, very strongly about only doing business uh, inside the U.S., and that's fine. You can choose only U.S.-based 
designers. Um, you can go overseas. Sometimes I chose to go overseas on certain projects because I wanted them done overnight. So um, because of the time difference, you can sometimes put a project in 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and by the time you get to work in the morning, the project is done. So um, a freelancer, we were able to get our first website for about $350. Um, it wasn't all that hot. Um, our logo that you see now, the Sunshine Plumbing Heating Air logo that you see now, um, it was similar, not exactly the way it is, but we had our logo drawn through one of these websites as well, and we put up a, a pretty nice website. It was okay. It did its job for the time being, but as we started to grow, we realized that we needed to add more and more features to websites, and that basic site didn't work. So last year, we revamped the website between 2013 and 2014. We revamped the site, and then again, um, I will share with you later on in the presentation that once again, I totally uh, took that site down. Um, at the end of last year, and I put yet another new site up. And I'll share with you why I did that and what my results have been thus far off of that website. So there's our marketing spend. Um, and then here are some of the things that um, with our reviews. So we're sitting at four and a half stars with Yelp. Um, and I'm going to share with you a lot about Yelp because, you know, love them, hate them. Whatever you feel about them, you know, people say they're like the mafia of the internet. Um, I'm from New Jersey. I tend to agree. They are kind of the big bullies of the internet. But if they're going to be commandeering everything as they are, and they are just everywhere, you can't really escape, it probably is one of those things that if you can't beat them, join them. And you need to learn how to work effectively with Yelp because they can drive so much business to your website and to your company, they can also drive a lot of business away from your company because their search engines are so robust and they spend so much money um, marketing themselves um, throughout the internet as a whole um, that it really makes sense to play ball with them. And I'm going to share with you what happened to us when we dropped stars um, and what happened to our business last year. Um, we have won the Angie's List uh, Super Service Award 2012, 13, and just 14, so that just came out. Um, we have over 500 A reviews on Angie's List. And that was really the beginning of our company, um, how we got started was with reviews on Angie's List. And we focused all of our energies and everything on getting those Angie's List reviews. We did not walk away from one job without asking for a review, giving them a review form, calling them again and asking for a review. Um, it was just something that was a core value of our company. It wasn't negotiable. When we brought technicians on uh, later on in 2012 and it's 2013, that was one of the things that we brought up to them right away from day one, that we live and die by reviews here. We don't have a big marketing budget. And you know, in order to work with us, we expect that you give our customers outstanding service and that you're always asking for reviews. And we started out from day one with that mentality and asking for reviews. But um, it's never too late to get started on the review bandwagon and, and how incredibly important they are and how cost effective they are. Um, we are a home advisor screened and approved, so we have a 4.92 rating with home advisor. Um, in my evaluations over the last few months, looking at my home advisor leads, um, and some of you may agree or disagree with me depending upon your market, our closing ratio on home advisor is incredibly low. And the reason for that, as you know, is that they send out leads to five, six contractors. We are really speedy, like we're within like a minute of getting back to them and getting them booked. But that doesn't mean that they're not roaming around getting five and six estimates, um, trying to get estimates over the phone and talking to guys that, you know, I call them Johnny Station Wagon, so it's a single guy in a, in, in a van um, giving price quotes over the phone. So um, I really pulled back on HomeAdvisor, and I actually pause them right now. Um, 
And that's because our SEO is working, working so well, and I'm going to share that with you with our SEO in a minute. We have 4.6 rating on Google+, and we're A-plus rated with BBB, which we're super proud of because after only three years, that's pretty good to get the A-plus so quickly. Um, and a lot of people still really, really care about that BBB um, rating, so we are very conscientious about um, making sure that we share that information and that we keep that A-plus in there. Um, so we're very, very clear on our goals. Um, our goals are that we're going to grow our company with taking out taking outstanding care of our service, of our customers. We, our plan is always just like blow them away with the best customer service that they have ever had. And I'm going to share with you what we call our 12 points of love. All of the things that we feel really separate us from some of our competition, um, because Denver is a, is a pretty big market, and there are some really big players in uh, the Denver market. Some of them spend a million dollars a year on marketing. And there's no way with our little $20,000, $25,000 marketing budget that we are ever going to be able to compete with them um, at the level that, you know, they're just throwing money at getting, getting calls. Um, we can't do that. We need to find another way because we are small and we need to deliver the, the best customer service that people are just like have to tell all of their friends and their neighbors and all of their Facebook friends about us because they're so impressed with with the service that they get. Um, and so here's our goals, committing to 100%. We have documented processes for everything that we do here. Um, what we do to document our processes, we have them live on our Google Drive. So whenever we change anything here, um, you know, through our operations, our marketing, or our field, we update that. It makes it easier to uh, take new employees on, it's easier to train them, it's faster. Uh, it's also good for review. We do this every 90 days where we sit down and review everything that we are doing and we ask ourselves, is this still working? Do we need to change it? Uh, what's our ROI on this? Are the customers happy with it? And if, you know, based on the answers that we get, we'll make changes at that time. Um, we also do a budget in advance of spending the money for any kind of marketing, um, and we create a 10 by 10 marketing plan. And I'll share with you what a 10 by 10 marketing plan looks like. Um, so we sit down and we say, this is what we're going to spend, this is what we hope to get from our ROI, and I have a very um, rigid rule about 90 days um, on any kind of marketing. I will try my darndest not to sign an agreement for any kind of marketing that's more than 90 days at a time. I really don't like to sign annual agreements with anyone. Um, I do have one exception to that, and I'll share with you in a little while what that is. Um, just because I believe that if you have a 90-day try on a new marketing promotion or idea that you should start to see some traction in that 90-day period. If you're not seeing anything in the 90-day period, I want to be able to cut bait and bail out. And that's kind of what we did with HomeAdvisor. You know, we really tried it for 90 days, we gave it our all, and I'm just not seeing the results. Um, I, I do like that I have the option of turning it back on again if we start to get slow maybe, um, crank, you know, crank up Home Advisor a little bit, put some money in there and see what happens. But um, I like the idea that I wasn't committed to, um, to putting all of my eggs over there in that basket. Um, and, you know, we did to get some business from there. It just wasn't maybe the areas that we, we chose. And we didn't specifically choose Denver. We chose some suburbs of Denver when we were doing that marketing because of the fact that Denver is so competitive and it's harder for us to be successful there. Um, we ensure that our entire team is on board and we test and measure everything. Um, I really encourage everyone, whether you're doing marketing, whatever it is, if you can't create quantifiable results and you can't track it and you can't see it, then my answer to that is don't do it. Um, you know, a lot of times people will spend tons of money on a marketing idea and I'll, and I'll say, well, you know, how do you know if it's working? Well, I don't. 
or people will say, well, it was just for branding. Well, I, I believe that if you're you know, a two million or under company, it's really hard for you to have the kind of money that it takes to invest in a real branding campaign. It's great to get your name out there. You can do that with your trucks. Maybe you have a billboard, maybe you have a bench seat, whatever it is where your name's floating around out there. But if you're not seeing results, it's going to be really hard um, for you to track it if you have no tracking mechanisms. Um, and we do use tracking numbers uh, through Service Titan. We are a Service Titan um, shop, and we love Service Titan because of all of the reports that we can get from their system, um, which was critical to our decision in, um, in bringing them on with us. And we're very, very happy with it. Um, we ask every single customer for a review in our happy call. So we have our technicians trained that they can um, that they ask for reviews, and then when we do our happy calls, we also ask again for a review. There we go. Um, we also have a two-year guarantee on everything that we do, so we think that's incredibly important. Um, very rarely do we get called back on it, but it does help us to close business, um, and we advertise that on everything that we do that we have this two-year guarantee. We guarantee everything that um, we do, should it break or fail within two years, we will come back and fix it at no cost to the customer with the exception of drains. And then we deliver outstanding customer service and we follow up with every customer every single time. Um, there is not one customer that goes by that we do not follow up with. So that's inc incredibly important. And then we send brownies and I'm going to share with you how we do that. Um, that's something that's been really special about Sunshine, and a lot of people know that we're famous for sending the brownies, um, and it's really helped us to establish a niche uh, and a name for ourselves and get a lot of referrals and a lot of repeat customers because they know that we're different. Um, no one's ever received brownies from their plumber before, so they think that's pretty cool. Um, and this is our secret weapon. This is uh, Kara Andrews. She's been with us since the very beginning. Um, she started out working in our office, um, helping me with my coaching business, and then helping Sunshine get launched, and she is still with us. Um, she is a valuable part of our organization. She's now director of operations. Um, I don't know what we would do without her. Um, so I really hope she stays with us forever, but she's cer certainly the glue that keeps all of Sunshine together here in the office and uh, keeping our customers happy. And in three, almost three years, we have never, ever one time received a complaint about Kara, ever, one time. Um, complaints about me, yes. Uh, complaints about the techs, yes. Never one time about Kara. So we are just uh, delighted with her and uh, we'll do whatever we can to keep her here. Um, and then here's that rule of the 10 by 10 getting into the nuts and bolts of this. So what the rule of the 10 by 10 is this, um, two different ways to look at it. One, one way the rule of the 10 by 10 can be used is that you never want to get more than 10% of your business from a single source because if that single source goes away, that could severely handicap your business. Um, Walmart, uh, for example, uses this with their vendors. They will never let a vendor um, put more than 20 or 30 percent of their business in Walmart sales because if Walmart decides not to do business with that vendor anymore, it could take them down and they don't want to be responsible for that. Um, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent on their end, but it's just sort of a business principle that um, if you're spending more energy than 10 percent in a particular area, you maybe need to reevaluate that. And how we use a 10 by 10 strategy in marketing is having 10 different uh, silos, if you will, of, of marketing ideas. So that if marketing stops to work, for example, a couple of years ago, the yellow pages really started fizzling out. And there were a lot of people that had all of their marketing budget 
into Yellow Pages. So then what happens, if you, when Yellow Pages stopped working, then a lot of people were really hurt by that, and they were scrambling to try and go out and get new marketing, and they made some mistakes by doing that because they were under pressure. Um, they had these big, long contracts with Yellow Pages that they couldn't change or get out of, and the strategy was no longer working. So we try to be very, very balanced in our marketing, um, and we're really glad that we did that because I'll share with you here too, there's a slide on what happen, happened in the Colorado market with Angie's List. But we try to separate our silos like this. So we have a web silo. We have a silo that has um, you know, traditional marketing, which would be print, banner ads, uh, maybe billboard, radio, those, that's more traditional marketing. Then networking. You know, how do, how do we network and who do we network with? Power partners, which would be realtors and property managers and things like that. Referral sources. So we sort of break out our marketing into buckets. And then maybe in the internet bucket, for example, let's just take that one. So in the internet bucket, we would have Yelp, we'd have Google Plus, we would have um, Home Advisor in some places. Um, we would have Facebook. We would have LinkedIn. We would have Constant Contact Blast. We would have search engine optimization, pay per click ads, remarketing um, ads, and such. So under the internet, and then under traditional, it could be some magazines and things that we do, some small local publications. Um, so that could be the vertical under traditional. And everyone's ten by ten is going to look different. But the, the whole goal of the 10 by 10 is if one of those strategies, so if you look at it like a grid, right, so if one of the strategies stop working, like for us, last October, our search engine optimization stopped working. So I was able to identify that within probably 30 days of what happened, and I was able to sort of rework that, and then it took us still 60 days to get back to where we were. Um, and one of the things that happened last fall, and some of you may have already felt this and you understand what's happening and you're, you've taken steps to fix it. Some of you don't understand what's going on. Why did you stop getting so many calls as you used to? Um, and some of you, you know, maybe your web guy is like on it and totally knew what happened. But last fall, Google went through a massive algorithm change. And that happens from time to time. It's just their way of sort of weeding out people that are, um, you know, doing things that aren't correct on the internet or shady or what have you. So they do these algorithm changes. Um, and if you're a search engine optimization person, whether internal or external, or your web marketing people are not, you know, having the pulse on this, it could hurt your business significantly. And for us, that happened last October. So our search engine optimization person that we had, who we think was terrific, he just was a little bit too small, I think, to accommodate our growing business. And as much as we liked him, it was a business decision we had to move on because all of a sudden our phones, it was almost like um, a faucet got shut off um, last fall and we were not getting any calls from the internet anymore. And um, our SEO guy and our web guy just didn't know enough to enable to um, correct this algorithm change. So we went out then at that point, and I started investigating true Google partners. And there are um, probably about a dozen that would work with plumbing and HVAC companies in the United States. Some of them are just specific for auto or legal. But I went and interviewed all of the, um, the Google partner specific companies. And I had eight of them. I narrowed it down to eight before I even got to this point. And I had them all come and give me a presentation on what they found was wrong with my search engine optimization and my rankings. What was wrong with my website? Why did my phone stop ringing on organic and paid searches? What was going on with my pay-per-click campaign? Um, and they found errors. All of them found pretty much the same errors that my current um, SEO pay-per-click person was, did not 
embrace. He did not figure it out. He couldn't figure it out. He just started blogging like crazy, which is good, but it wasn't enough to fix the algorithm change. He totally missed it and didn't know how to fix it. Um, and you may be in a situation like that. I encourage you that if your phone has really slowed down since last fall, that it could be the fault of this algorithm. Um, change and that you really should get an evaluation and you can get evaluations from you know dozens of web companies before you pay them any money just have them give you an evaluation and you can look at the results and see what's going on with your site behind the scenes because even with us with 500 Angie's List reviews and you know umpteen stars on Yelp and lots of stars on Google and so on and so forth we still had a massive drop in calls uh, primarily on our HVAC side um, our plumbing is tends to be a lot steadier because we've been doing plumbing longer than we've done HVAC and we have a lot of repeat customers so um, and we look um, making sure that we are doing really good target marketing and chunking that out. Um, and one of the things, once again, that we love about Service Titan is that we are able to um, see by zip code and certain markets how successful we are. And we can look at our average dollar per sale in certain markets. We can look at how many calls we're getting from those zip codes, what areas are working, what areas aren't, what areas are too far for our guys to be calling. So we look at our target markets in different chunks. So we look at property managers, we look at realtors. <clears throat> um, Denver is in a big boom market right now, so realtors are sort of a blessing and a curse at the same time because um, it seems that there's always a big rush to get this um, inspection report done and then the deal blows up at the end and, you know, everybody's done all this work and, you know, it, it, they don't want to move forward with it. Um, so we've done all these estimates. So we're, we're taking steps to sort of um, wall off some of that business. Um, then we look at our networking. Um, who wears a good source of networking um, for us. Um, the Women's Chamber is fantastic because we are a woman-owned business. Um, we also uh, belong to a BNI, which William goes to, which is fantastic. Um, we go to a Latip group. Um, we go to other leads groups out there, and so we have it all segmented out, and we send different people to those so that we're always out in the community um, chunking out our marketing um, and creating a big difference. And that's one of the things that we, we really pride ourselves on is that we like to be different from everyone else. So our 12 points of love that we are always uh, promising to people and what we deliver on is this, is that when they call 24-7, they always get a live person. Now, I don't have 50 people working in the office, so sometimes that's impossible, but what we do is if here in the office, if everyone doesn't pick up the phone within four rings, it will roll over to a very professional answering service that we have that is transparent to the customer, really, that it's an answering service. And I have reworked our script with the answering service uh, dozens of times to make it so that the customer feels cared for just as they would if we were answering the phone and that the customer is able to express all of their information um, to the answering service. Um, so that's one of the things that we do. We call the day before the appointment. We use a service called Reminder Call, which is mine and William's voice, but we call um, the day before to remind them of their service. Then we call afterwards to ask them um, how the service was. We also send out a survey. Um, and backing up here a little bit, before, as the technician hits dispatch, a bio comes to them out of Service Titan, which sends a photo of our technician along with um, all of the information about them, how long they've been a plumber, how long they've been an HVAC, what do they like to do in their spare time, um, and it introduces the technician. The technician also calls the customer and lets them know they're on their way. Um, then afterwards, after the call, we email instantly their estimate or their receipt, whichever it turns out to be, and then the office will call um, the next day to ask how things were. In the meantime, they'll also get a survey asking how 
things went. Um, we are now using Review Buzz, um, so they can then go on Review Buzz and write a review. Um, but when the technician is there, we always ask for a review at that time. When we call the next day, we ask for a review. When we follow up, um, which we do um, once a month, we also ask them for a review at that time if they haven't done it. So these are some of the things that are different with us. And then we always send a thank you card with a $25 coupon in it um, about seven to ten days after service. If they spend more than $300 with us, we send them brownies, so two pack of brownies. And they're not Colorado brownies. They're just regular, really delicious brownies that everyone loves. And then um, if it's under 300 they still get a card that we send them that they, that they love. And it's got a coupon in it every single time. Um, and our, so that's really our unique selling proposition is those brownies and the, the 12 points of love um, that we go through with every single customer because we really feel that that separates us from everyone else, and that once again engages people to, to encourage them to give us their reviews. Um, and our technicians also um, get compensated on, with awards through Review Buzz. So when they get reviews, we log them into um, through the Review Buzz system, and they have prizes. So um, if they get just a few reviews, so a basic review is either 250 or 500 points. A Yelp review is 1,250 points. If it sticks, it's 1,500 points. So they can get uh, $25 gift cards um, for 2,000 points. So that's around what points equal is a $25 gift card. They can get a 50. They can get uh, ski tickets, they can get a hotel downtown for the night, they can get a hotel up at the, the casino for a night, um, and the, the prizes keep going up based on accumulating points, and the grand prize is 40,000 points, but they win a trip for two to Mexico. And all of our guys are so excited about that trip that they're all really vying for it and really trying to get their reviews up. Um, so it's really important. Um, another thing that we do is our trucks always have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on board for the homeless. And you'll see William uh, there up at 5 o'clock in the morning. We do this um, on meeting day. Um, we don't do it every week anymore. We did, and then we started finding peanut butter and jelly sandwiches like under the seats of some people's trucks, and some people were eating them. And um, so we don't do it as as regularly as we did, but it was really in the beginning, the first year, we did it every single week. Um, and I mentioned in the very first slide that we go down to the food bank once a quarter and we serve. Um, and then we have pay it forward weeks, where when the guys come into the meeting, they will reach under their chair and they'll find some money under there. And their job in the next seven days till the next meeting is they have to give that money away somewhere in the community um, hopefully through a drive through because we found that when they try to buy the people behind them lunch, uh, sometimes that the people think they're weird. Um, so we try to have them you know, go through a drive through a Starbucks or whatever and buy um, lunch or coffee or whatever for the people behind them, and we give them the money for that. So that's another thing that um, people have mentioned in reviews, that they've seen us, and we do these cool things in the community, and that's why they called us, and then we went out and gave them great service. Um, and we also make sure that when our technicians arrive, that First of all, they're really neat and clean. They're wearing a shirt with their name on it. They put booties on. They introduce themselves to the customer. They carry dog biscuits um, in the car. If the people have a dog, they have to ask, but they do have dog biscuits. And then we've just ordered these little beach balls that will be coming soon, um, which gives little beach balls with our logo on them for the kids. Um, and then we have pens because we're completely paperless. So when the customer signs their estimate, um, we use like a stylus pen, and then we leave it behind uh, with them. So they have that to remind them of us. And of course, we do the magnets and the stickers just like everyone else. But we just try to keep adding these layers of extras on there so that um, when it comes, comes time to write a review, that we're really, really giving them a compelling reason 
to write a review because their service experience was so outstanding with us. Um, and there's a picture of the brownies, and that's William. Um, whenever we do like a, a trade show or a town market or whatever, we borrow this uh, toilet bowl game from a local family as a construction company in town. And uh, William thought it was cute to stick his head out up there one day. And we got this photo, and now that's on all of our thank you cards. So it's pretty funny when he walks into someone's house and there his head is sticking out of the... Um, the toilet bowl. Um, but creating a difference with the guarantee, and I mentioned that earlier, um, a lot of people are afraid of that, but we get very few people ripping us off. So um, it really just gives people increased confidence and security and able to do business with us. Um, I told you earlier I was going to share with you some things that happened with us in Angie's List, and I put this um, little warning note. So when you log on to Angie's List in Denver right now, you see this sign. Must read, important changes to business center. Business center is not currently functioning. Well, it says as of February 3rd. That was last year. Angie's List business website in Denver has been down since February 3rd of 2014. Okay, now that doesn't mean that customers can't go on there and find you and um, that they can't write a review or anything like that. The reviews are not being posted because the business center is down, so it's very intermittent. So if we got 10 reviews written, maybe like three of them will show up. Um, you also, we also lost our ability to be able to do the big deals which was really, really important to our business in the beginning. We were doing a lot of these big deals because we wanted to get as many customers as we could onboarded so that we could start then you know, going deep into our customer base and offering them other products and services and not spending money getting new customers. So getting back to the 10 by 10 marketing that I shared with you earlier, had we not um, had surrounded the wagons, if you will, with other types of marketing, um, we would have been in big trouble because this Angie's List um, uh, regeneration or whatever they're doing here, I, I'm still not sure what they're doing. Um, we did win the, the 2014 Super Service Award, but we didn't even know how we did because we can't see the reviews. Um, we still do have an outstanding average dollar per ticket on Angie's List customers that call in, but I will tell you that it's definitely broken, and if we hadn't ventured out into other marketing, we would have went down. Um, and I know of three companies that actually did go down because they had all of their eggs in an Angie's List basket, and when Angie's List went through this transition, they were done. Um, one of them now works for someone else, and the other two uh, merged into other companies. So um, it, was, it was really challenging for our market. Um, it did dip our business last year, but then we were able to recover pretty quickly um, because then we had Yelp, which um, I wanted to explain to you what happened with Yelp. So um, one day when William was still the solopreneur, he's driving around, and Yelp calls up and says, Oh, they're selling advertising, what have you, and it's $550 a month. So William thought that was a good idea, and um, he signs up. Now, all of you know that Yelp uh, is a tough customer. They're hard to work with. Um, they're, some people will say, unscrupulous, whatever it is, by hiding reviews, what have you. So now we're all afraid to take the $550 away, uh, a month away because we're not sure what's going to happen. But... What, it, what started to happen was that we started getting a lot of great Yelp reviews, awesome ones. So last June, when we were at like an all-time high on Yelp, we ended up with 365 calls from Yelp. Then we got three bad reviews in a row on the front page of Yelp. They hid a lot of our great reviews, and we dropped down to like three and a half stars. The next month, we only got 26 calls. So we went from 363 to 23 calls. So we have been working like crazy people over the last year to get that back. Um, Yelp also sort of changed something. Now, now they are also doing some pay-per-click advertising, which is working great. It's 
it's awesome. Our average ticket on Yelp now, and now we're back up to four and a half stars, which is right where you need to be. Four and a half stars is like the magic number for that phone to start ring, start ringing. We got like 400 calls last month, and our average dollar per ticket on Yelp is 600 between 600 and 675 dollars per call. Our Angie's list is sitting like in the high 300s. Um, previous customers are sitting somewhere around um, three to four hundred per call. Um, some of our other advertising and our HVAC, of course, the numbers are going to be a little bit higher than that. But Yelp now is our best single lead source, and our guys work so hard at getting more five stars on top to bring us back up to the four and a half star rating, and it's helped tremendously. So my advice is whatever that you can do to get your team to be getting good Yelp reviews, do it. And even if you have a couple of stinkers, the more five stars that you put on there, their algorithm will capture that and it will start bringing you up higher and higher each week. So even like if this week you were to get two five star reviews, that would last for like another week. It would bring you up higher. Um, and I got a tip from a QSC member at the last power team meeting, which I took, um, we are not really 24-7, but uh, they suggested that we go in and change our Yelp to open all the time, which in essence we are. We have an answering service that answers the phone all the time. Um, and when we did that, our call volume also increased. So if you're not saying open all the time, I would encourage you to, to try and do that. Um, and then here's some of our Angie's List reviews. This is a little bit old. We're well over 500 now. This is 522. I think the last time I looked, we were like 575. Um, and it's really interesting. They have solar panels, which we've never installed solar panels for Angie's List, so I'm not sure how we ended up with that. But we have A's all over the place now. Um, 406 in plumbing, and we don't do lawn irrigation either, so I don't know how we have three reviews, but um, it's still nice that we have that. And here's, um, here's our Yelp, so 818 um, leads in the year, right? Estimated revenue, $200,000, I mean, that's on their number. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, it's really been fantastic. Their, their numbers are really creeping up there. Um, and also we've had our struggle with them too. Uh, love them or hate them, they're there, and they do help um, your your rankings, your search engine rankings too. Um, Review Buzz, love them. Um, this has been fantastic for our employees to be tracking these points, um, and they get really really excited about it. We sh we show this at every team meeting, and we log in all of our happy calls, and then the customers log the reviews. And what's cool about Review Buzz is say a customer goes on to write you a review, if it's seven, they ask on a scale from one to ten, like how happy were you with your service? If it's seven and below, Review Buzz will notify you so you can then correct the, the customer situation. If it's seven, seven and above, they will bring them onto the review sites and the customer will have a choice of where they want to write the reviews. So then they have the option of going and reviewing you, and you know it's a good review. So it's a good stopgap to stop someone from writing a bad review with you online. Um, so I would encourage you, if you're not using something like this, to talk to the Review Buzz folks. Um, they are a PHCC partner member, however, um, and they're fantastic, and they're at all the shows. And um, I'd encourage you to, to get with them and have a chit-chat at least if you're if you're thinking about doing something to manage your reviews, because it's been very effective. Um, and then also on our website, we have the Review Buzz tab. Um, and so people can just click, and they can see our reviews for everywhere, all in one spot. And that's been very powerful, and it's helped our search engine optimization ranking significantly. Um, and then re lots of referrals, and the LKT is like you know you and trust you. And we really try to develop personal relationships with our clients so that they do like us and they know us and they trust us. And we get a lot of referrals from our community and people that we know and clients and, and that's really key because referrals are free. 
So eventually, the more and more referrals that you have and the more and more existing customers you have in your database, you can start ratcheting down that, um, that marketing budget, getting it lower. And here are some of the uh, networking opportunities that we belong to. Um, Rotary, uh, Latip, church, community, we get a lot of referrals from our church and our community because we are active in both of those places. So um, that's definitely a place that, that we excel in getting leads. Um, there's BNI, uh, and we test and measure everything. So here's just a view from a couple of months last year. And if you look on the left on the campaign, you'll be able to see all of the places that we get leads from. So our 10 by 10 marketing campaign is much larger um, than 10 by 10. Ours is just huge. Um, and this, when I did this screenshot, you don't see Yelp down there, but that's kind of when we were in the doghouse with Yelp, and our Yelp um, average dollar per sale was like $150. Then when we got up to four and a half stars again last month, that's when the numbers really started shooting up because we were getting so many more Yelp customers calling us. Um, and we also let the technician know that it's a Yelp customer, um, make them aware, um, because they get excited that they get a lot of points for that review, um, and that really helps our company um, when we're getting really good Yelp, really good Google+, Plus, Angie's List, so they know when someone comes from one of the review sites, we, we inform them in advance so that they sort of do the extra mile, if you will. Um, and we say that marketing is math. You know, whatever, and this makes everyone around here really nervous, um, when we are slow, that's when I start spending a lot of money on marketing. Um, most people go the opposite direction. You're slow, you got cash flow issues, you don't spend any money. Whenever we are slow is when I go and do some Hail Mary uh, pass, like buy a new website or whatever, um, in order to get the phone ringing again, and then, you know, a ringing phone cures a lot of problems around your company. Um, so we look at things as an investment. So there's the $3,000 website I did between 2013 and 2014, and now I've gone up to a $10,000 website. Um, and I did a tremendous amount of research before I bought this site. And my key was is that I wanted them to be a true Google partner. And the reason that that's important is that the true Google partners can get you a better rate on your pay-per-click. Um, and pay-per-click is another thing. It's a quick. If you're slow, throw some money on your pay-per-click if it's organized properly, and your phone will ring. And with our with our previous web guy, it wasn't like that. He, he didn't have the knowledge to get the pay-per-clicks at a really good rate. And I was paying, as an example, $85 on a cold day for furnace repair. Now, that's great if the person actually called, but if they were just clicking around looking and they weren't going to a good landing page or a good site, they, I would pay $85 for nothing. And my budget was eaten up so quickly that paper clicks really weren't working. So when I switched over to this $10,000 site, the way it works is um, I pay them so much per month, which includes my search engine optimization, my web hosting, and unlimited design and changes and whatever. I can also make a lot of changes on my end. They manage all my paper clicks for me. So at the end of year one, if I hate them and I want to fire them, um, from doing my pay-per-click and my search engine optimization, I would have to pay them $5,000. At the end of year two, if I don't like them anymore and I want to move on, I would pay them zero. So in essence, my monthly fee is covering what it costs to build this website, all my search engine optimization, my pay-per-click budget, which is like $1,400 a month now, um, and my remarketing. And remarketing is kind of a new buzzword that's happening in the internet world, incredibly powerful. Um, I'm sure that you've experienced it yourself, and you may not have even known what it meant. Um, but say so I Google, I want red shoes. Um, or, so then, every time I'm looking on the internet in the next couple of days, all these red shoe ads are popping up. So Sunshine now is getting a lot of remarketing. 
I mean, we're spending some money on remarketing and it's really working. Um, so someone Googles, I need a new water heater, right? So now wherever they go over the next couple of days, a little sunshine uh, banner is popping up and it has dramatically increased our call flow. Um, so, you know, we're extremely happy with this website. We also, you'll see it says there, Denver Metro and Commerce City. Um, Commerce City is a suburb of Denver. Uh, it's a pretty big suburb. It's really close to Denver. They, they touch each other, like for miles, but um, we took offline Denver and we went into Commerce City. And the reason why we did that, this is where our office is located, but by using the Commerce City keywords, it's a lot cheaper for us to uh, market ourselves, to do pay-per-clicks, to do remarketing, to do search engine optimization, and it gives us a lot more exposure. So um, think about that. If, if you're in a big city, you're in Dallas, maybe you're really in a suburb, um, and maybe you want to start running even simultaneously some ads, which will be a lot cheaper in your suburb, um, because that definitely makes a difference in your cost per click. Um, so we look at having this as an unlimited marketing budget. Um, as we grow by sending constant contact blasts and revisiting our existing customers and selling maintenance agreements, it's okay if our acquisition costs are high now, they'll continue to drop as we continue to get more customers and look at their lifetime value. And what does a customer, a plumbing customer, spend in a lifetime? So as we continue to grow Sunshine, um, probably not for the next two years, but after that, I, I can see our marketing budget going down significantly, and then just really keeping the pay-per-clicks going um, and keeping them, too, for rainy days. And so if it gets slow, we can you know, throw some, some serious money at pay-per-clicks for a couple of days, and then we get right back up to our, where our call count should be. So... Um, and then we do constant contact. We have a really great response. Um, one that we've just done, and there's not too late, you've got nine days left. Um, we did one um, in February that was key. Um, so it, you'll see we did February 24th and February 26th, right? So why did we do that? Well, we did it by accident one day. Um, so look, out of 2,500 people, 537 opened it on the 24th. And what, what it said in the heading is, um, notice, if your water heater is seven years or older, you need to read this now. And then it, when you open the constant contact, it goes through a story of the new water heater regulations. So then what we did, and this is, we found this out by accident a, a while ago, if you send the same email two days later, we ended up then getting 450 more people open it. So it started out as an error uh, last summer sometime, and now we realize that that works. So you send your email blast out twice. Um, and, and ours just really has some specials and coupons, a little note from us, um, what's going on in the industry, like the water heater regulations. And um, we try to do this every six weeks or so, um, and it really, really generates a lot of calls. So um, I encourage you, if you're not doing any email marketing, um, and that's another thing with Service Titan, we have everyone's email address. So um, right now we're sitting a little higher than that. Um, that's from a couple months ago. We're probably sitting at around 2,900 in our constant contact. You know, people unsubscribe. So, um, you know, we've served a lot more than, than that number in the last three years, but that's how many we have in our database that continue to enjoy our newsletter um, and don't opt out. So, and then we blog. Um, we actually have a blogger uh, who works with us now. Uh, she's on staff. She does administrative work, but she also does her blog. Um, and you can feel free to reblog if you're not a big writer, but this will also help your search engine rankings and help highlight your reviews as well. Um, and then we always say, do you want it cheap? Do you want it fast? Or do you want it good? Pick two, because you can't have all three. So. <laughs> Um, and then I mentioned Freelancer earlier and Fiverr. These are places that you can get cheap uh, graphics and ideas. Um, 
five bucks sometimes. Um, you want to get a punk constant contact done or a little review card or whatever it is that you want to get done, they can do it for you super cheap. And then there's our 12 points of love um, that we talk about. And then um, we really are strategic on who our target market is by looking at zip codes and knowing who, which areas to focus on and not really going outside of that. And we are now really focused on bringing our area closer around Commerce City and cutting off some of the outlying towns that are too far from us. So we're very, very focused on this now. And we want to make sure that we're not after just a lot of market. We want to have the people that buy from us have a higher ticket. So, and we also do a really good job of killing off our C and D customers because they suck up a lot of time. They don't spend a lot of money, and um, you know, as we continue to grow, we really will not tolerate the C's anymore. We won't tolerate the D's now, but the C's, some of them we have, um, we'll continue to move out of that. So, that is pretty much what I have. Um, and how we build our marketing campaigns, the what, what's your offer going to be, and what do you want to buy. Um, so I guess I'm going to open it up for questions. I know I, I talk really fast, and I had a lot to share. There's so much to say. Um, so what questions do you guys have? One of them was, uh, do, you, do you all pay for Angie's list? No, uh, not in Denver. We do not pay for Angie's List. What, how we pay for Angie's List, if we want to run a special, so say we want to do a water heater uh, for $9.99, they would take 20% of the big deal. But we don't pay a fee to be on Angie's List. We're not one of those markets. Okay, thank you for that. Um, this is a good question. How do you make sure your entire team is on board? And I believe it's just referring to everything that you do, marketing-wise. Well, we have a weekly meeting every single uh, week at, on Tuesday mornings from 8 to 10, and it's a training meeting. So we go through sort of business of the week, and then they turn in their paperwork, and they do training. Uh, we use the Kenny Chapman videos. But once a month, I do a full-blown marketing meeting, and I show them all the stats of all the leads that we got, where they came from, how many reviews, and I am we are always talking about reviews. Um, we have a huge board in our conference room. We bring up the review buzz stats every single week. It's just constant focus on that. And they saw with their own eyes when we went to four and a half stars on Yelp from four stars, what happened to the call volume. It went off the chart. And they also saw how easy it was with the Yelp customers to make a lot of money. Um, I mean, their tickets are really high with the Yelp customer without even really trying because they'd seen the review, they already trust us. Let's see, um, how about the last one here? Uh, we get a lot of Yelp reviews, but we can't get them to put any of them on the front page. Out of 80 reviews, only 13 show and half are negative, even though they're like almost the only ones we have. So out of 80, they said? Um, according to this question, yes. Wow, that is a lot. You know, we've experienced that too. Like we have 35 showing right now. So if you look at us in Yelp, we have 35 showing. Three of them are bad. And then we have probably 50 or 60 that are hidden. What I found, and, and I don't know, this isn't scientific. This is just what I've observed. So this is the world according to Susan, not according to Yelp. If you can get a whole bunch of good ones on in the for in, in one week period or a two week period, it really starts changing your algorithm in there. And also like making um, sure that you're getting real true Yelpers because Yelpers have credibility. And my husband and I joined Yelp ourselves so we could understand how it worked. And it's kind of like a weird underground community too. Um, they have parties and things, um, which we don't go to, but we understand how it works. You need to get like people who are really involved with Yelp, and they have a lot of reviews, and those are the ones that stick. 